What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, I'll be showing you the best optimal settings for the RPCSX emulator on Android to get the best performance on both Adreno and Mali GPU phones. And of course, as we know, this new emulator carries over almost everything from the RPCS3 Android build, but now it's under the RPCSX developers. So yeah, I've already installed and set up this emulator on the Poco F6, which is powered by the Snapdragon 8's Gen 3. As usual, let's go into the settings. First, select Custom GPU. I've already imported the Turnip Driver version 25, which is currently the best and most stable version for this device. If you have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, Gen 2, or even something lower, it should still work well. Now go to Advanced Settings, then Core. You can leave everything at default here. It's mostly not necessary to change anything. Now go to the video. Same as usual. Go to Vulkan. Select Custom GPU Driver. Enable Turbo Mode. Next, enable the Performance Overlay to display FPS while gaming. Then, set the resolution to the lowest, which is 480p. Frame limit is set to off, and everything is same as before like we did in our recent RPCS3 videos. That's all you need to do in this section. These settings work really well on Adreno 7 series GPUs, and they may also work on some Adreno 6 series GPUs. I'll show the optimized settings for the 6 series later in this video. Right now, so this is Tomb Raider, but as you can see, it's not booting at the moment. This is expected, as some PS3 titles still aren't fully optimized on drivers. However, some games like Naruto Storm are running smoothly with good FPS and stable performance. God of War 3 is also performing exceptionally well, with no major issues well, thanks to the Turnip Driver versions 25 R2 and R3, which are delivering better results on this emulator. But if we switch to the default system GPU driver, most of these titles fail to run on Snapdragon devices, on the other hand, Mali GPUs tend to handle some games better, even without a custom driver. So the experience can vary significantly depending on your phone's hardware. Now I'm moving over to a device with an Adreno 6 series GPU. Well, this is Galaxy S21, powered by Snapdragon 888 with the Adreno 660 GPU. I've already configured this device with a custom GPU driver. If you're using an Adreno 660 or 650 like on Snapdragon 870 or 855, I recommend using Turnip Driver version 24.3 build, or if you are using even lower, like the Adreno 6119 or 610, choose Turnip Driver version 24.1 for better compatibility. But don't expect more performance. And coming to the settings, everything is the same as usual. Same settings we applied recently. Now let's load the GTA 5 PS3 version on this device. As you guys can see, it's loaded. We're getting almost decent performance here. But don't expect the same performance as emulators like WinLater or GameFusion because they're based on a completely different platform. Windows emulation is very different from PS3 emulation. I still recommend those emulators for a better overall experience since this one is still in the development stage. RPCSX needs more optimizations and fixes to perform better in the future. And finally, let's test it on a Mali GPU device. This is Infinix Note 50X, powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 7300 with the Mali G6 Fun Theme GPU, running on the latest driver and 8GB of RAM. Yes, this time I'm using a different phone, because I've already done a lot of testing on the Exynos 1380 with Mali, and it runs well on that too. Now, as usual, go to Settings, Advanced Settings, then go to Core. Here, set PPU threads to 2, and set max LLVM compile threads to 16. Next, go to Core Affinity, assign CPU 0 to RSX, and assign the remaining cores to SPU. Also, make sure to enable SPU cache. That's it. Leave others to default. Now go to the video, and here everything remains the same as we applied recently. And as we know, custom GPU drivers aren't supported on Mali GPUs. Now, let's test some games. If you run into any crashes or bugs, just close and restart the emulator, then reload the game. As you can see, we're getting stable FPS in this game, and it compiles really fast. However, don't expect the same level of performance on all Mali devices. It really depends on device to device. Like if you are using Helio G99, it works slow. For example, in one of my recent videos, 
I tested a Galaxy device with the Exynos 1380. It delivered almost the same performance as this chip, but its GPU is different. If you're using a device with the Dimensity 1200 or similar, the emulator runs quite well. But with the newest Mali GPUs, there are still optimization issues which can lead to crashes and errors. So these are the best settings for both Adreno and Mali devices. Well, this emulator is still in the early stages, but it's showing a lot of promise. Performance is improving and things are looking pretty stable so far. We'll just have to wait and see how it evolves in the coming updates. If you found this helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more emulation content. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.